Tina tubers I am I just posted my first video of the year and I couldn't be happier that I did it so I'm off to my job that I talked to you about oops and I'm on time I'm always on time but sometimes I might be running a tad late it makes me nervous so anyway uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's so cute. And um, I didn't say in the last video how I work with two other um, caregivers. Lisa is the gal that hired me. She's not a, she's not a medical person, but uh, she is the one that she was, re she was referred. Um, for the job and she did it alone seven days a week four hours a day for seven months and then she hired uh, the other gal that is a caregiver and has done this all her life her name is Dana they both are very sweet and I'm very very happy that um, they found me so what's happening is and I don't know think I told you but it's a month that she hired me for um, she had to go to Houston Texas to help her mother who is in assisted living and one of the people there were stealing cash from her room and uh, she has a little bit of dementia so the doors have to stay open so she had to go and see about that and she also said that um, one of the one of the people that helped her talked her into signing over her car to her. And people, I'm finding out more and more that this is such a happening, that this happens all the time um, with people that quote are caregivers. And nothing could make me sadder. It just is, it's just horrible. So, I, um, I don't know, I just, I feel very bad that that stuff happens. I, I, I don't know how people live with themselves, but we are in a fallen world, that is for sure. And so, um, but everyone, all three of us are very, um, what do I want to say, very responsible, very uh, trustworthy and honest. So. He, he was fortunate to, um, to get a group of people that have his best interests at heart. And we all have different personalities and he just appreciates everyone and the help he gets. So I'm uh, on my way and I, last night I went to dinner. I'll try to put the, I'll try to put something, something in here a little clip that I took last night. It's a new restaurant, and it's a bunch of new restaurants that um, are happening close to me. And it's like its own town, this little town, this little part of the city is, it's like its own city. Does that make sense to you? It's um, like I live in Bradenton, this is Lakewood Ranch, and that has become its own little city. So it's quite beautiful and the restaurant was outside and on the water and it was just so nice. It was a wonderful day, but it's one of the first restaurants that opened and I believe it's called, oh, here we go, Good Liquid Gold. It's a brewing company, but the food is really good. And so it was really nice. They had a ladies book club there that we sat by a fire pit and so did they. I think there was 14 of them. Gosh, isn't that amazing? And um, I thought, what a, what a fun time. I would always like to have been in a book club. I don't know, maybe I should start my own. What do you think? With strangers. Yeah, I don't know. But 
it's cold here. Well, it, okay, that's wrong. It's it's cool for Sarasota, and it's gonna get cold in the next couple days, like a low of 40, 37. That's really quite chilly for here. We've had times where it gets cooler and you have to cover your plants. The only plant I would worry, worry about is my little orchid that shot through. I, I think I told y'all I threw the orchid in the tree because I can't keep anything alive. Letty, you just, you would be so saddened by my lack of garden, my ability. It's, it's pathetic. Anyway, I it died. It was an orchid that my mom's friend gave to her at her 90th birthday. So somewhere I heard and saw that you can put it in a tree and it'll, it'll grow again. So that was 2019. Last year, 2021, two years later, as I was taking my sweet little baby to the vet because he had died, I walked out the front door and looked over and that orchid had come to life and had a bloom and so oh god I miss him anyway um I will cover that one I will cover that orchid and, and um I'll send you a little I'll put a snapshot in here of the bloom and somebody sent me a stone when he passed a girlfriend Brenda and it said forever in my heart or something like that so I put it in there and there's also, I took a picture, my girlfriend was looking at it, observing it, and she said, oh my God, look there. That is a face of a dog. The bark looked like the face of a dog. Is it God everywhere? Isn't he amazing? A lot of people say, well, you, you see into it, but you wanna see into it. That's what my spirit and my flesh, what the spirit of Christ sees, and that makes my day. I think that is wonderful things. Like Letty was talking the other day that your parents can speak to you in dreams and, and some of the, your vocabulary, some of the isms that you say are your parents. Um, I don't know. They're, it's just everywhere and I love I don't want to wake up when I dream of my mom and I dream of her a lot, but she's younger. Usually, most of the time, she's younger. And, oh my God, it's just so wonderful. And then, um, my parents had a wonderful friend. My stepdad was a policeman in Detroit, so many of them retired and moved to Sarasota. So they all hung around together. And I got to know them all and love all of them. They were a lot of fun. And one of them was Eleanor. She laughed all the time. I loved her dearly. She said, I have, she had a daughter still in Detroit, her youngest, and, or not her youngest, but her youngest daughter. And she said, would you just call her and contact her? She kind of doesn't know where she wants to go. And I just worry about her and tell her how great Sarasota is and she should come down and take the medical program like you did and get a great job. So I did. And her daughter's name was Doreen. And she came down here and we hung around together. Not not for long. She's a lot younger than I was, but at least she got started and she went into um, a doctor's office that was the eyes and they they treated her well. She made great money and she stayed there forever until she um she finally got married, met the right man, and they waited for years to have um, children. I think they tried for a long time. I don't know if it was in vitro or whatever it was, but they had their miracle boy. And Eleanor was like so, oh my God, she was, she was like grandmother like I would be. And then they had their miracle little girl. And they all went to church where my brother and his wife and sun went and so it was just wonderful that their their dreams came true and their babies came to them and so years later um, her son was turning 18 
so he went with his boyfriend up to Tampa, I don't know, to some bars, maybe, I don't know what they did. But that night, her daughter and, and her friend were spending the night at Doreen's house at their home, and her daughter and friend crawled out a window, and I know that we did that same stuff too, and they um, were gone, and boy was, was her mom, Doreen, was really upset. So she, um, when she found them, I don't know where they were, but she called her son and said, I want you to go get your sister and her friend, pick them up, they're in trouble, but, and bring them home when you, on your way, when you come home. I don't know why it was, it was early in the morning. I want to say four o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know if drinking was involved. Or, I don't know, but he was speeding and went to turn and, and turn into a brick wall and kill all four of them. It was on the news for days. It was the most hard, gut-wrenching thing like her two miracle babies are gone in an instant and their friends and her son was driving. So you have the guilt of that whole situation and you have the guilt of her yelling at her daughter, last words to her, you know, all that normal stuff that absolutely kills you. And why I'm saying all this, ah, I better turn, is that where I turn in the street to turn in for my sweet little companion that I take care of um, is a, a photo, a memorial of those four children. I had no idea it was right there. So I got out and took a picture. It's been 11 years. It will be 11 years, I believe, March 13th, something like that. And these parents, even though they had God in their hearts and their lives are destroyed and they are like walking homeless people. They showed up at my mom's funeral um, and I hardly recognized them. And I think her husband is in rehab. Um, she, the mother said the only reason she doesn't kill herself is she's a believer and wants to be with her kids again. Makes me so sad. Sorry this is a sad, I don't know why this came up, but anyway, here's their sweet pictures. And to all of you, any of you that have lost your babies, I, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine. So my heart goes out to you. You're the warriors of the world that bear up and go on. Amazing. Love you. I'm going to close the video for today. Remember, be good to yourself, be good to others, and God will bless your efforts. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.